every day, um, pretty much every day, yeah, even on, on weekends, um, about the things that are going on. And he, he actually taught me most of what I needed to know to run the release and like also kind of gave me, um, uh, you know, um, ideas and, and um, cues to, you know, what I should be doing at a specific point in time during the release. Um, so going in, I had no idea what I was, I was supposed to do. Um, now I'm mostly spending my time on, on track and, and trying to figure out which um, tickets we can close um, or commit. Um, and so that kind of keeps me busy. <laughs> um, and I think that is something that, you know, just, just being, around, being around track and being around Slack and, and, and yeah, the communications channels, and staying on top of that, like, that is like the, the major thing that I've been doing, pretty much. How many people here even know what uh, contributing to WordPress core is? Is, there, is it a room full of a lot of developers? Raise your hand. Cool. So how many of you, when we say track, do you know what track is? Yeah, a lot of people. So track is the software, um, like the ticketing system uh, WordPress core uses. So. If you're developer savvy, or even not, if you're a user and you find um, a bug or a problem in WordPress or you want to make a feature enhancement, Track is what we use to do ticketing. So you can go in, create a ticket, and then somebody on the core team, which is usually one of us, will pick it up. Uh, the core team, though, is how many people, um, you know, obviously WordPress is open source software, but how many people know how open source software communities work? I mean, it's really, it's really based on volunteerism. It's actually this kind of utopian uh, idea of like the software being free and the people donating their time um, to work on it. And so a lot of people that end up being leaders of the project are just people who decided they wanted to volunteer their time uh, to work and make WordPress better. So that's kind of, is that how you got involved too? Pretty much, yeah. So like, um, and it's a lot of fun too. I mean, I ended up doing it in my spare time and it really, it becomes addicting once you, you know, even if you make a small change, once you see that you've gotten credit for changing WordPress, it ends up being pretty cool. And then you do something bigger, and you're like, oh man, I'm controlling WordPress. This is, you know, this is so great. But, um, yeah, so I mean, the, and it's open to anyone though. So especially anybody here that might be um, interested in being part of the project, there really isn't like a barrier to entry. Like no matter what level you're on, um, there's, there's many ways to contribute, even if it's just going to support forums and answering questions for people if you have some WordPress knowledge. But, um, you know, everybody kind of starts somewhere. And for us, I mean, I, I started at like ground zero at the very bottom, and just happened to spend a lot of time um, playing with the code and trying to fix bugs and got more experience that way. So if at any point in time any one of you has a question, um, as Mel pointed out earlier, we have two microphones left and right, um, and we would ask you to go to microphones to ask a question. I see John over there. Hey guys, is this on? Yeah, it is. Okay, first, thanks for coming. We appreciate you being here. Uh, what's the plan for responsive images in WordPress? That's going to be talk tomorrow. Which I'm sure we'll mention it. Is there a polyfill that get integrated? How are you thinking about that image? Yeah, so I'm definitely looking at that for WordPress 4.4. Um, I mean, honestly, for me, I need to just educate myself about, um, I need to learn from the session and from just studying the repo. I mean, if there's a plan, it, most of these things are just like, if there's a plan for it to go in the core, um, it's definitely something we can figure out if it's, um, you know, a lot of stuff gets developed with plugins, and which is good for testing stuff, but then they usually have to be um, transitioned to a core patch. So I, probably the best route for that is if there's not a ticket already, if somebody, you know, this is something I could help with too, but if somebody creates a patch and we look at that and say, okay, what's the actual changes we're making here? Um, but I know there's a lot of support around it. Um, so barring anything weird, it's definitely a candidate, uh, hopefully for 4.4. Four. Well, Beans, thanks. Yeah. I'm not sure. How is writing code similar to writing poetry? You know, there's a, I'm going to answer that. There's a lot of, there's a lot of ways. Um, 
So I'm a musician, and um, actually a lot of people uh, who I've met, especially in New York, are all, like, that didn't go to school for computer science, but you know just kind of became engineers. Um, a lot of musicians have done that, and my friend um, Helen Dusandi, who's a WordPress developer, is a musician. Um, you know, we actually she and I both studied classical music in college, and. Um, there's a lot of parallels uh, to the discipline of writing code and like the discipline of performing. Um, and I actually think that's why musicians are good at coding. It's because you have the discipline to sit and learn something. Um, like you think practice isn't a bore for you, it's just part of the process. So if it takes a while to get from A to B, that's okay, because you expect that. Um, but I think there's a lot of creativity in coding. I actually really enjoy the fact that you kind of start with a blank space and then you create something. I mean, software, and especially stuff that's on the web or dynamic, I mean, you're creating an experience, you know, and you're in complete control of, uh, you know, designing it. And I just think there's a lot of, uh, you can put a lot of yourself into that. Even when you're adhering to a lot of, like, standards and you're, like, following a lot of formulas, you know, there's, it's still your instructions that are making these things happen. So, I don't know if that answers it, but it's a. Uh, I just think there's a lot of creativity behind it, and so I think like poetry is a good allegory for like, you know, the the, the act. One other thing that I think that makes me most frustrated as a WordPress developer is the way that content and options and lots of other things are all messed up together in the database and. It makes it hard to migrate it and to version control it. Do you foresee a day ever where that gets sorted out more? Yeah, so, um, can you give me an example like a, of something you want to migrate that you, like, like, a, like a concrete piece of content that you think is hard to migrate now? Um, well, let's say, um, I want my client to be working on us uh, entering content while the site's still in development. It's almost impossible to control that. Or um, if the client is, a, you know, has sophisticated privileges and they're allowed to, like, I don't know, change the order of widgets. Like, I can't. I have to not touch any while they're doing that. Right. That that is version control around options. I think would be complicated. I mean, luckily for posts, we do have um, revision control. And I think the, uh, you know, for the way WordPress works at its most primitive level, you know, it supports a blog, right? It supports the most basic thing you can do with WordPress. But when you start doing complex things and you start registering post types, et cetera, the, the post table actually becomes like your data store. And your post types really become your object types. So definitely for things, you're right about widgets and options because you know it's like all or nothing, you change one and, and it's done. Um, I don't have a great answer for that, but I do know that when you're doing stuff with object types, uh, taking advantage of revisions there is a good way forward. I know there's also some work that's been done around uh, post meta revisions, and um, that's probably something we should get to too. Um, there hasn't been a huge outcry for it, but I think it definitely is a more solid, um, it does make it more solid to have that kind of stuff. I'm going to think about that options thing. I'm going to try to have a better uh, solution for the future. But um, yeah, it's very volatile, and especially it's, it's hard to figure out how do you create a system where multiple people can be editing stuff, and if you want to roll back changes. Also, the, the thing about how staging content and then merging out of production is hard. And that's, that's a problem almost everybody has. Um, you know how many plugins people use for that? Does anybody here know how many plugins people use for that? There's WP Migrate Pro, I think, lets you push and pull the database around if you're on a server that supports it. You know? okay. And it's not flawless, and it's like another step, you know, where you can, I, it doesn't really do it at um, you know what, and we should look too, I mean, this is the kind of thing, um, 
in the core community, this is kind of a thing that could be a feature request that like maybe doesn't have enough coverage on track right now. So like um, a lot of the things we discussed that people are pain points for WordPress, a lot of times in track there'll be a ticket that's kind of been avoided or nobody really got around to do. Like for instance, post meta revisions are in there. We just we just haven't implemented it yet. This is the kind of thing that if we start a discussion around, it may turn out that a lot of people come out of the woodwork and say, yeah, this is we have this same problem and it really needs to be solved, you know, across the board for the community. And we also need to like elevate the plugins that are out there that are helping solve this problem and make sure people know that like this is like the best way you can do it right now. I feel like it, this is a really big pain point for people who develop websites and WordPress, and it's the kind of thing that you guys on the core team would never encounter because you, you know, version control all your stuff, and you don't need to deal with like people entering content. <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, and believe me, I was, uh, you know, I was in music for a number of years, and we had a, a huge editorial um, payload, and I'm at the New York Times now, and the stuff, like all the stuff, comes up. I mean, it's. It's a little different now because you know the times have been chugging along for so long that we don't really have the staging content issue. But definitely, when people start new, big, huge sites and you're migrating content, you want to have content ready ahead of time for production. Or if you're trying a new feature, you're trying a new custom post type, and you want to create a hundred hundred pieces of content ahead of time to stage it, it does require an entire migration plan. So this is definitely something we need to think more about. But we'll keep you posted. Hey guys, um, so I'm a geek, right, and I love to get really, really excited about WordPress stuff, technology, software, all that. There's been a lot of talk about the customizer lately. Um, not a surprise to anybody that's been on the internet on any WordPress forum ever in the past, like, I don't know, month or two. Um, so my question is, why should people in this room get super stoked, super excited about the vision of the customizer and what's coming next. Um, so I want to hear, uh, you know, all of the positive, interesting, um, innovative vision for uh, the customizer and uh, give us everything you got. Uh, thank you, Michael, for that question. <laughs> um, we were talking about um, how many customizer related questions we would get earlier. So the customizer is ex exciting for users specifically um, because everything they can control with it on their sites, they can preview um, while they make changes. Um, and they, they see it happen right on, you know, on, on their life site more or less. Um, Rather than being stuck in a, in a setting screen, um, you know, hitting a save changes button and having to switch tabs to look at how it looks in the front end. Um, also, while regular users or, or, or readers of your site um, interact with your site while you make those changes. The customizer is better than that. Um, in the customizer, you can preview all the changes before you make them and can be sure that they're right and, um, and, and just, you know, have, have a better understanding and feeling about the changes that you make while you make them. In terms of the future and, and um, what, you know, the, the roadmap for the, for the customizer, um, there was a post recently on, on makewordpress.org slash core about that. Um, I don't think we have a set in stone roadmap for the customizer right now, correct me if I'm wrong. Right now we're trying to um, add things that make sense in the customizer to the customizer. You want to interrupt? I just wanted to ask the question if people in this room uh, have some amazing ideas and how to contribute ideas to the customizer, to you, um, how can they get in touch? How can they get those ideas to the core team or help to fill out that roadmap? So there is a weekly customizer chat. Um, it happens on Mondays at, um, I think, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. I think so. So Mondays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, there is a customizer chat every week in um, the core-customizer uh, channel on Slack. 
and that would be definitely a forum where people can uh, voice their opinions and ideas about you know what should be added to the customizer or how it can be made more awesome than it already is. Um, how can they get in touch with me personally? Um, either through Slack, uh, through Twitter, under at OpenLand, although I probably will ask you to ping me on Slack. Um, you can find me on, on the web basically under my last name, OpenLand. Um, that's how you can get in touch with me. Uh, Scott Taylor, he's wonder by music pretty much everywhere. That's how I get, get in touch with him. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, I just, uh, I, w I, wanted, uh, I wanted to hear some of the positive uh, things about Customizer, and I, I think I heard them. So. Well, let me add one piece to it. So, I was kind of oblivious to all the um, chatter about people being disappointed with the Customizer or people thinking there was a heavy-handed approach to the future of the, of the Customizer, but um, the feature that's going into WordPress 4.3, which is the nav menus in the Customizer, the idea of it didn't excite me at all until I actually used it, and I actually think it's a much better experience than the current version. On top of that, we had a huge scaling problem. Um, if you had huge menus and you had a bunch of menus, like saving the saving your actual menu would, on some configurations, would actually time out or break. Um, and we got a bunch of tickets about that, and like no one had a great way to solve it across the board. And the experience of the customizer is super fast, and super light, and being able to live preview that stuff is cool. I haven't used the customizer on like a gigantic, highly customized site. Um, like I wish some of that stuff had been around more when I was working at eMusic, and that stuff actually would have been great for editors to maybe program the homepage and like work with. When you're working with uh, key WordPress components like widgets and, and menus, I think it's pretty awesome. Um, and especially with stuff like the default themes. A lot of the stuff that gets built for WordPress is not for the people that are doing highly customized things. I mean, it, it is, but the, the main user base of WordPress are the people who are you know, mostly blogging. And uh, you know, I'd say 90% of our users are definitely doing that. Also, one more thing is that um, the customizer is still very much in its early stages of development, I feel like. Um, there's a lot of things that are coming in the customizer. Um, I anticipate in 4.4 too that um, make me very excited about it. Specifically, um, um, partial refresh, which is a horrible name, but um, the functionality that it only refreshes changes to the very element that is being changed instead of having to reload the customizer every time you do it, uh, which will increase its speed significantly. Um, and also uh, the possibility to um, to revision customizer states uh, and also share customizer states with someone else, something that Western Rudder has been working on for a while now. Um, these are things that are coming to the customizer eventually that will that will change it um, significantly and make it a lot easier for people to work with um, and a lot more fun also to, to use them. Thanks a lot, guys. We have a question from a WordPress newbie. Uh, so my question is, how do you think someone should get started working on WordPress? Working on WordPress. Talking about the um, using WordPress or writing code? Uh, contributing. Um, so there are a number of ways to start contributing. And all are equally good, I think. Um, I think with any code base um, that you want to contribute to, I would start getting familiar, number one, um, with where stuff is. And I would actually start with uh, identifying a specific problem you're trying to tackle. Um, a lot of times people say, I want to contribute to WordPress, and they have a specific thing they don't like about it, or they have a, a feature that they want to implement. So, either one works. I think, like, for me, when I started contributing to WordPress, um, the problem I had was, if you had WP debug on, and you had error reporting turned up to the highest level, every um, page load in WordPress produced uh, an error log notice. Um, 
And I think, you know, that's because dot com probably has WP like turned off on production. But the problem one is, on, on eMusic we were doing that, and we had millions of page views, and so when you were in your Apache log trying to look at and see what's happening, you have this like snow globe of, of these error notices. So I had to track down that specific bug and figure out what line was doing it, and I made a very simple change. But that was my first contribution to WordPress. My second one was XMLRPC, which we were using to talk to our mobile app. Every request of that caused a notice because uh, of a PHP error, so I tracked that down. But I, I think like there's that kind of thing where you have a specific, specific bug you want to help try fix. There's also like you may have a specific interest, like you may be into the WordPress themes, right? Um, you know, 2015, 2016 theme or whatever. And you may, you may see a ticket that's like, oh, we need to add styling to this, or the styling to this element's weird. And you may say, oh, you know what, I can, I know CSS, I can go in there and like provide this patch. Or you may see somebody else's patch on a ticket, and you may disagree with the approach. You may also notice that like somebody, there's a ticket that has a patch, and nobody's touched the ticket for like, six weeks, two months. You can download the patch, apply it to your WordPress, test it, make sure it works, and then say so on the ticket. It'd be like, hey, this patch still applies, I think this is a good fix, I think we should move forward with this. Um, a lot of the ways people get started is just going into tickets in WordPress, in WordPress track, and just testing the patches. Or going on and saying, oh, this, I, this ticket looks good, the patch looks good, but it doesn't apply cleanly because since the person made the patch, there's been a bunch of changes to WordPress, and now it's stale, so it needs a refresh. Um, we call that like task bug, bug gardening, going and gardening the bugs and triaging tickets. Um, and a lot of us do the same thing. I mean, we sit down and say, I want to spend some time working on WordPress because it's fun, and we go into track and read tickets. And I think the first thing all of us do is try to find some easy tickets, especially those of us with, with commit access, the first thing we do is find low hanging fruit because we know there's going to be a lot of esoteric stuff that's going to take a long time to work through. So we're like, what can I do right now? You know, and like, you know for sure for 4.3, you've gone through that ticket list a hundred times, hoping you can commit like 15 tickets. And what ends up happening is you commit one and then you bang your head against the wall and the rest of them, but then you try to track down 20 people and yeah. But um, yeah, try to each try to track me down. I still haven't done half the stuff he wants me to do. But, uh, so I guess there's no one way you start contributing. I think people enter from any number of angles. But also, it, it, people have different interests and people have different skill sets. Um, it's like, do you want to change the code in WordPress? Do you want to have, have a new feature? Do you want to just help the community? Do you want to help move tickets along? Um, all those things are great and completely valid. It really depends on like it, what you want your involvement to be. And, if you become an active person in any of those arenas, like, that's great. And you'll be welcomed with open arms. And uh, you can very easily become one of the more active people in, in a release. We actually have no clue who's going to end up being the active people in a release. It's just the people that do the work, you know? The people that show up. <laughs> and it's also not only code where you can contribute. I mean, I started um, just writing plugins and, and you know, publishing those in the uh, plugin repository as a way to give back, um, and then start reviewing themes, something that is completely unrelated to WordPress itself. Um, and also you, you know, coming to, coming to WordCamp, um, talking to people, asking a question like this, um, this is already a way to give back to the WordPress community um, and get involved, specifically. Um, organizing a WordCamp, speaking at a WordCamp, attending one. Um, there's also within the WordPress projects, there's um, a whole bunch of areas where you can um, contribute to, even though you don't, you know, understand how to write code or understand how to how to read a CSS or whatever. If you can read and write, uh, you can help out with documentation, for example. Um, you know, find, find spelling mistakes <laughs> and contribute to WordPress that way. Um, if you do, you know, code and, and understand code, um, you know, like my first, my first patch in WordPress was a missing underscore somewhere. Like, it can be as, as small as that, you know, um, and you already help contributing to WordPress. Uh, Nason's first patch to WordPress was, you know, in PHP you have define, so you can define WP debug, but it also has a value which is like true or false. 
So there was a defined somewhere, and in, in some function, it was just checking if the constant was defined. But you want to do if defined, and then you want to read the value of it. So I think it was wpdbug, where it was an if statement that was like if defined wpdbug. He changed it to if defined wpdbug and wpdbug, right? And I also know that Nason like lur it lurked in the shadows for about three months, where he followed a lot of activity, but actually didn't say anything or do anything, you know. And then he's like, "Hey guys, here's the patch for the WPD bug thing," and that started his, you know, um, prolific uh, contribution to WordPress. Got a question over there. So, Constantine, uh, what exciting new features are coming to WordPress 4.3? Mel, thank you for asking that. <laughs> So one of the exciting features for WordPress 4.3, uh, Scott already mentioned, it's going to be menus in the customizer. Um, so you will be able to manage your menus straight from the customizer and preview all the changes to your menus before you um, commit to them. Um, another exciting um, new feature will be site icon. So you can now manage your um, browser icon and an app icon for your site from the comfort of your customizer. Um, you can upload a picture or, or, or small image and it will be used as a favicon, as the web development community calls it. Um, so it's you know the little picture in your browser bar. Um, that's where it will, will show up and kind of represent your site to, to the web. Um, we also have made improvements to the way that list tables are being displayed on small screen devices. So when you use your WordPress app and with your mobile device, you now have a lot more of the, of the information available on your mobile device uh, than you used to. Something really funny. I've been there, yeah. Um, another super exciting um, uh, new feature in WordPress. Um, what else? Oh, we have in, in the editor, we have now uh, the ability to um, recognize certain text patterns and convert them for you. So when you start a, um, a new line with uh, an asterisk um, and hit space, it will be um, changed into an unordered list. If you start with a one and a, and a period, it will you know, change to an order list. We also have block quotes and headings like that, which will, you know, has the potential to, to increase the speed of you know, uh, the way you write your blog posts significantly. Um, what am I forgetting? There's so many new things. Oh, we have, by default, um, comments are now turned off on uh, pages. Also, we have in the toolbar on the front end, we now have a separate customizer button to, um, uh, to the rest of the links that will bring you back to the uh, WP admin side of things. So that now it's a lot easier to you know, separate between going to the customizer and to um, WP admin from the front end. I think those are the most more significant ones. Oh, um, of course, better passwords. Um, so now we uh, suggest a secure password to users when they update their passwords, when they um, get registered to a new site, or when they set up a new site with WordPress. Um, so it's a lot, it's a little bit harder to, to um, set up an account with an insecure password. Um, and we try to put a lot of emphasis on, um, you know, getting or creating a secure password for your WordPress site to, to make it um, harder for attackers to gain access. Um, that's also a fairly big, big new feature. Yeah, those are probably the main ones. So um, I saw that there's a little bit of motion on a fields API, and I wondered if either of you were interested in commenting on, on that and where that might go and when. I have read the post, but that was pretty much it. I don't really have a whole lot to say on that. Um, there is a, a bunch of different um, takes on how to do fields properly, and. I, you get a different answer from every different WordPress agency on how they solve the problem. I think we definitely want to have tools like that in, in core, but I think it's just really nailing down the right approach. Um, is there any feature that already exists kind of in the wild? It's something we probably don't want to start writing from scratch for WordPress core. I think we want to look at all the existing options and see if one of those makes sense to transition. Um, 
that's actually one of the things. When we did post formats, we were looking at um, crowd favorites post formats plugin, and I don't know if, if we had just taken it wholesale to start, if, if that would have like pushed the project on a little better, but it, for whatever reason, we thought we had to like write it from scratch and do everything brand new, and it didn't really work out the way we wanted. Uh, I think with the fields manager thing, we have to look at all the different use cases of why we need it, and also like who the um, user base is going to be for it. So it's not the kind of thing that 95% of users are going to use, but maybe 100% of developers that work at agencies and work on big media sites will definitely want to use. Um, I know that for a while there was a team around it that was meeting and talking about it and started doing some development, and it kind of died off. A lot of conversation has popped up again now about people saying, hey, look, here's the solution. Let's put it in. And I think it's really just us uh, sitting down and really analyzing um, which one we think is the platonic ideal. How do you meta fields go? That's not really an answer. But, <laughs> it, it, but uh, it's definitely on our list of things that we know people want. We know people, we know people are writing their own solutions because it's the thing that comes up a lot. I, I even wrote a fields manager thing for myself for an internal New York Times project because uh, people just are going to need it when they create these dynamic admins. I guess it's okay. Um, I'm a designer I'm new, and I know code. Um, I'm new to WordPress and I'm wondering, did you say something about whether um, WordPress is uh, as responsively designed um, are there many things out there with responsive design, or is it something new you said you're bringing into the core? Wasn't... <laughs> Did I? Well, so for uh, most teams now, and you, we can speak more of this. I'll speak real quick. The responsive images, there's a new way. Um, I'm not sure if it's HTML5 specific or what it is with source set for um, attribute for images where you can actually, when you declare your image, specify multiple sizes, and the browser can automatically pick like a higher res version on a higher res screen. Um, there we go. But, uh, so that's a very specific feature, but openly can kind of talk about how responsive fits into like theme reviewing and all that. Um, yes, so um, I think the only default theme currently that is not responsive would be 2010. Um, all other default themes are responsive. Um, there, when you go to the WordPress or theme repository, there is a filter bar where you can um, search for responsive themes. Um, so you can, you know, um, yeah, you can only show you can only show in the responsive themes that are in the repository, which are quite a few. I don't think there's any themes that are coming into the repository now that are not responsive. Um, so yes, there is a lot um, that is happening on that front in. Uh, in WordPress. In terms of responsiveness in the WordPress admin, um, as I said, the, the list tables is just some, I mean, it has been responsive, fairly responsive since WordPress 3.8, um, since the last redesign there. Um, and in 4.3, we just added more information to, to list tables um, because we were kind of, you know, hiding that to make it responsive. Um, but now we found a better way to do that. We have Steve on there. Hey guys. Uh, my question is uh, back to regarding um, core development. I was wondering if you could share some of maybe personal strategies or experiences um, with two kind of twofold question here. Um, one with how do you go about selecting what to participate in with core? Um, how you select a ticket um, or maybe make a smart choice for something that would maybe have some momentum behind it? And then the second part of that, um, how do you ensure that it has momentum and won't go stale? Great question. Um, so for me, the criteria probably is, is twofold. One, uh, can I make an impact? Um, like, do I have the necessary skill set to, to help move that forward? Um, even if it is just you know me knowing people and being able to, to get the right people on, on the ticket and, and participate in that conversation. Um, and the other is um, uh, definitely momentum. What is you know how does the interest of other people look like? Is that something that more people are interested in um, that has a chance to get in? Or is this just me burning my time on, on something that you know is never going to make it in anyway? Um, and, and and then also, um, 
finding out if, if this is a feature that has the potential to go into WordPress in the first place, right? Um, any component or feature or thing that has a lot of active development around it uh, is going to usually rise to the top more than anything else. And also, I think, uh, so as an example, Customizer, once again, was written in like WordPress 3.4. Um, and then a couple of releases later, Coop was gone from the project, and like no one knew how to do the customizer stuff. I think um, Dominic Schilling kind of became the de facto component maintainer of that. But very recently, um, Weston Rudder and um, Nick Halsey had spent a lot of time on the customizer. And if you notice, a lot of customizer stuff is happening. Very few, uh, very few of us like deeply understand the customizer code. Like we we know it, and like we can review patches, and um, we know enough that when changes need to be made, we can shepherd them. But there's really like full time development going around, going into the customizer from Weston. So it ends up being an active thing. You know, a couple of releases ago, um, well, the same thing kind of happened with media. You know, Cooper wrote media in 3.5, and then he was gone. And there really was kind of like a dearth of knowledge around that. Um, and then WordPress 3.9, you know, I realized how hard it was to get into media development. So I spent most of the year actually just like learning all that code, and I documented all the code, um, and tried to make it more digestible. And actually in, I guess it was 4.2, I completely rewrote how media is assembled. So it's a lot easier to digest now using um, Browserify. And so instead of it being three different 10,000 line files, it's actually like 117 small files. So um, that, that commit was nuts to, to do. But, uh, but what happens, and I even noticed this, is like when I go into media now, I don't have to know everything about media. And before you kind of did, that's why it was very hard for people to come back and start contributing, it, even for me. And I was writing media and features, but I was just kind of doing it around the edges. Um, is that in one of the features we had in 3.9 is how you could paste in the URL and your YouTube would appear. And like, there's very specific JavaScript around that. But now when I go to work on that stuff, I can focus on like just that, you know? So like, nobody on the rest of the core team was really saying to me, oh, hey, we should do all these things media, but it, I kind of saw it needed a future, and so I put a lot of active development into it, and then it, it kind of worked out. Um, if somebody came in, like, well, for instance, um, the taxonomy roadmap we've had for a long time, right? But, and I was, me and Nason were kind of handling the taxonomy component. I was pretty intense about taxonomy, I think, six or seven releases ago, but I, I eventually got kind of tired of it, but Boone came in. Boone has been destroying taxonomy. He's been all over it. And just it's just because he's doing it, you know, and now it's it's rising to the top because somebody's doing the work, you know. Um, so all those little, all those issues, every little component like that, and every little subcomponent needs love. It needs somebody to like really be in there working on it. And it can be um, very monotonous work, it can be very esoteric, it can be boring. But you know, all those things need a future. And if, and if somebody decides that they're going to become the person that's going to shepherd it, then that stuff will eventually rise to the top. And people, and people notice that stuff too. In WordPress 4.3, there's been a lot of work around accessibility from um, Andrea uh, Fursia. And if nobody went and found that guy and said, hey, please do all this work. And I didn't even know he was going to be around. But he's done amazing stuff. And a lot of his stuff is dry. I've, I've committed a lot of his code just because I'm like, yeah, I can't, I can't argue with this is all really good work. Um, so there's that. There's also just like, you know, if you don't have a component that you want to become a maintainer of, then the next piece is like, how do you make an impact? And the number one thing anybody can do is bug gardening, you know, which is just like general stuff like comment on the ticket, is the patch fresh? Does it apply? And Every release, there kind of ends up being like two or three people that come around and are very active doing that, and everybody notices them just be, just from the sheer. Because a lot of us subscribe to the fire hose and track emails, where I get like 200 emails a day sometimes, and I don't you know sit down and study them all, but I see all the names, I see the ticket titles, I, I can kind of tell the ebb and flow of what's happening, 
And you can also tell the ebb and flow of who's around. You know, so if your goal is just to like, let me push the project forward, there's a ton of things you can do. If your goal is to push specific tickets forward, and you and you have like this uh, mindset of like, well, this ticket matters to me, it can be tough because um, specific tickets kind of require buy-in from at least one committer who's going to say, all right, this person who I may or may not know um, and whose code looks pretty good, I think I might commit them to WordPress. But what happens is if there's a problem or it becomes a security problem or a performance problem, um, they're going to come to me. They're not going to go straight to the patcher. And then I'll have to go to that person. That person may not even be around. And then it becomes, you, you kind of become shackled to those changes. So sometimes people are willing to take bigger risks than others. And some people are saying, you know, I kind of like this, but I'm not ready to take on this thing in addition to my current workload or my current, because everybody has their own priorities they're working on too. Um, I don't know, I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah, yeah. Michael Shen is, uh, is there any uh, plan to make WordPress uh, HTTP uh, 2.0 compatible? Because I see, I just uh, edited uh, the HTTP 2 session, and it looks like some of the browsers are already HTTP 2.0 compatible. And the server side Apache and other uh, programs are already HTTP. So at the after party, um, go up, go up to Zach and just tell him to go write the patch for that. And we'll, we'll, we'll put it in. I mean, I don't. It, it's one of those things. If somebody does the work for it, because like for instance, right now, that's not on my immediate list of plans to go home and do. But somebody like yourself or Zach, if they really want to see it in there, and you supply a patch and it works, and we have unit tests and we figure out that it's a good thing, it could probably easily happen. I don't specifically know what it takes right now to support it. Um, but some other smart person will figure it out, and you can help Shepard something like that. He told us two more questions. <laughs> One more time. You can talk to us in person if you have a question. Woo! Right, thanks.